The Salesforce Sales Cloud Certification Exam Guide is available on trailhead.salesforce.com and if you go to Credentials and then select Certifications, you will find the various roles available listed here. And what you want to do is click on the Salesforce Consultant role to bring up the consultant related certifications. There's several here that you'll find and we are interested in for this particular video at least, regarding the Sales Cloud Consultant certification. So if you click here on Sales Cloud Consultant and then select Get the Exam Guide, this brings up the exam guide for the Sales Cloud Consultant certification. Now a few things about the exam. One would be that there is a prerequisite. You have to have the Salesforce Administrator credential before pursuing the Sales Cloud Consultant certification. You'll also find answers to your frequently asked questions as far as the number of questions on the exam. The time allotted, the passing score, as well as cost for registration, as well as retake if you happen to fail. Delivery options are proctored online or on site. That means someone will be watching you to make sure you're not referencing outside materials or online materials. It's strictly what you know and understand. And there's also a note about the five randomly placed unscored questions on the exam. That's why there will be 65 questions instead of 60 and 105 minutes allowed instead of 90 because of those ungraded questions. Scrolling down, there's some links for recommended trail mix from Salesforce little typo here, Credentia instead of credential, that's nice. And then the exam outline, this is where you'll find the different knowledge areas and learning objectives. The learning objectives will be the individual bullet points under each knowledge area. Typically, Salesforce does a pretty good job at structuring these exam guides in a logical order. And I do recommend that you try to learn these concepts from these exam guides in the order that they appear. Because typically you'll find in most exam guides the fundamentals, the foundations towards the top, and then things get more complex and layered as you go further down. Now I've just expanded all the different learning objectives here for the various knowledge areas and first of which would be sales practices. Makes sense that with sales cloud consultant certification that they would start things off with the sales practices side of things and you will need to understand some theoretical things around just consulting in general and you'll need to begin to start learning some acronyms as well, such as key performance indicators, KPIs. These are common sales related acronyms that are relevant not only to Salesforce Sales Cloud Consultant Certification, but just in sales environments in general. And then as well, you'll need to be familiar with common sales and marketing processes and key implementation considerations and also understand the sales cloud features such as high velocity sales, Salesforce inbox, Salesforce maps, and sales cloud Einstein. Anywhere you see Einstein, that's referring to artificial intelligence or AI. That's Salesforce's current branding for their AI solutions. And then the next knowledge area you'll find is implementation strategies, also pretty heavily weighted as well. Three learning objectives, and you'll notice that there's a lot of mention of given a scenario. And just rest assured that most of the questions on the exam will be scenario based, they'll be pretty wordy and involved and you have to determine based on your understanding what is the best possible answer or best possible answers. You may be asked to select one or multiple answers to a question and they will tell you how many you're supposed to select as well. They don't leave you to guess how many would be the correct answers. Things you'll find here would be concepts around a successful consulting engagement and some of the typical steps there would be planning, gathering requirements, designing, building, testing, deploying, and then finally documenting. And then as well, determining appropriate sales deployment considerations, and then after the implementation of a project, how to analyze the success of that project. Now we're getting into more, we're getting out of the theoretical and more into hands-on in Salesforce, and this is the application of product knowledge. And you will be designing an end-to-end -end sales process from lead to opportunity to quote to close to order and as well some scenario based things such as differentiating what is appropriate to include custom application development versus third party applications hint hint that would be the app exchange typically and then as well you're going to be tested around accounts and opportunity teams also known as sales teams as well as their effect on the sales roles, visibility, access, and reporting. And so I've scrolled down here to show that also there's a knowledge area specific to reports, sales metrics, reports, and dashboards, but 
where we were with this application of product knowledge, there is a mention of reporting. So a lot of times these concepts, these knowledge areas, these topics will be revisited across multiple knowledge areas as well. Now discussing the capabilities, use cases, and design considerations for additional features such as territory management and forecasting. This is where you would be getting into territory hierarchy, those sorts of considerations, as well as collaborative forecasting. And then beyond that, a few more learning objectives here, and bear in mind that this is weighted at 18%, so there's a lot here to take in, would be capabilities, use cases, and design considerations when implementing opportunity products, products, price books, and orders. And then finally, describing the implementation considerations of multi-currency and advanced currency management. So you'll definitely want to enable multiple currency in your org if you're preparing for Sales Cloud Consultant certification and getting familiar with advanced currency management, what that means as well. It's all good stuff. And then finally, coming out of application of product knowledge, which was weighted 18%, we're getting into lead management. And just remember that the lead side of things is the beginning step in the lead conversion process as far as inbound lead creation by any sort of forms and processes. They mentioned the capabilities that support the sales process, but also just bear in mind that there is a lead process in Salesforce as well. I imagine that you'll be tested on that in addition to sales process, which is what controls the stages on opportunities, the lead process controls status on lead records. Okay, so then as well, recommending appropriate methods for lead scoring and criteria for lead qualification. That lead qualification, those different steps in the status there, that would be the lead process as well. And then best practices for managing lead data quality in Salesforce. So there's some hints there of potentially validation rules, duplicate matching rules, those sorts of things. Now, once we get out of the lead side of things, if you think about the lead conversion process over into contacts, accounts, and opportunities, we start to get into some of those objects now, specifically around account and contact management, which is weighted at 11% at the time of this recording. And this has to do with the ownership of account and contact records and how that drives access to related records. And so a lot about relationships, security, and access due to the ownership and relationship between those objects or records. And then various methods for establishing access to accounts, also person accounts, something that's not really on the admin exam, but you start to see in the sales cloud consultant certification. You can enable person accounts in your org once you enable. That makes some fundamental changes to your schema in Salesforce, as well as contacts and opportunities. And remember, the sales process controls stages on opportunities, so you'll need to understand that. These are byproducts or results of the lead conversion process. That's where you get contacts, accounts, and opportunities quite often. So lead management leading into account and contact management makes sense. And then account hierarchy. The impact of that on visibility, maintainability, and reporting. So there's that word reporting again, rearing its head in the account and contact management side of things. I'm really belaboring this point because oftentimes people will say, I had a dozen questions on reporting, but it's only, for example, supposed to be 7% of the exam, so it can't possibly be that many. And so just bear in mind, during the exam, if you're finding things related to reporting, just really determine, okay, is this really about reporting or is this something to do with security, access, visibility related to account and contact management? Or perhaps is it something to do with the application of product knowledge around opportunity teams and then the effect on reporting there as well. So you're seeing these concepts repeated over and over. Now going from account and contact management, we're getting into the opportunity management. Now granted, opportunities are on the previous knowledge area, account and contact management. And remember from the lead conversion process is where contacts, accounts, and opportunities are typically generated. So that third and final piece of that lead conversion process is the opportunity management side of things. Remember the underlying sales process, it's highlighted right here in the knowledge area, and that's what controls the stages on an opportunity by record type, so you can have different sales processes. It all goes hand in hand under the sales process there for the opportunity stages. And then summarizing the relationship between sales stages, forecast, and pipeline inspection. So you, this is where you're really getting into the different percentages based on stage the anticipated revenue or amount based on those uh, percentages, and then the forecast category. And so you want to get familiar with all that as well for opportunity management. Now we are kind of rounding things out in the second half of the exam guide here, sales, productivity, and integration. 
This is where you'll be tested on email productivity tools such as Salesforce Inbox and Outlook or Gmail integration. Those are available in the free developer account, so you can always test that out and try that out, as well as collaboration tools. And here is where Slack is beginning to appear. Slack was acquired by Salesforce recently, and up until now, I've only seen reference to Chatter as it relates to collaboration, but now we're starting to see Slack show up. And then other collaboration tools will be Quip and then the previously mentioned Chatter, which I think will eventually go away in favor of Slack, but it's still there for now. And then as well, mobile solutions. So even though it says sales productivity and integration, hinted in that is also the mobile app of Salesforce. Not a lot of waiting there. I think at some point Salesforce may actually have a mobile certification. I think that would be cool because they really don't go in depth on the mobile side of things at all on a lot of the certifications that I've seen. Now, we're getting into some more theoretical here. This would be consulting practices, 7%, and this has to do with analyzing and prioritizing valid use cases from a client as well as understanding the consulting project lifecycle. And that is more outside of the Salesforce platform and more with traditional software development lifecycle, project lifecycle. So you may want to look for some things on Trailhead around that or some other resources around typical project lifecycle. And then getting into reports and dashboards, this would be the analytics side of things as far as reports, dashboards, and reporting snapshot solutions. And so this is where you take the data that you have in your org and it's visually represented and then as well get familiar with reporting snapshots. And then finally, data management. And typically what Salesforce tends to do on most exam guides is they'll have data management first and then they'll have reports and dashboards. You kind of have to have the data before you can have the reports and dashboards. So this to me feels a little out of order from just a structure standpoint. And I feel like consulting practices probably should be at the top end as well. But I think they're just kind of throwing in these final thoughts here in the end. But if anyone from Salesforce uh, or Team Trailhead is watching, consider reorging this exam guide and fix that typo. But anyway, back to the topic here, data management. Explain the use cases and considerations for data migration in Sales Cloud. And then given a scenario, analyze the implications of large data sets, transaction volumes, integrations, and moving data between Salesforce and other systems. And so there are some implementation guides around dealing with large data sets inside of Salesforce. You might search for that as well as another resource available. And of course, I've got a course on this particular consultant certification as well, so check that out. And then finally, pieces around the code of conduct for exam candidates what you can and can't do or what you should or shouldn't do. And then finally, maintenance information around maintaining your certification once you attain it. And if you found this video helpful, please do like and subscribe. Please leave a comment down below for what you'd like to learn in Salesforce. And I just might make it my next video. And until then, I'll see you in the cloud.